Oh, we're live. Okay, so hey, welcome to the show, JP. This is great. We started this off trying to figure out what JT was actually talking about. Yeah. So he's like, oh, you know. Listen, I just got re cheeseburgered. I'm freaking good to go. I'm ready for at least 20 minutes before a nap. <laughs> The McDonald's brain fuel. Yeah. 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 It's really good for you. I mean, yeah. actually, you could tell me that. You're a nutritionist and a doctor. I am. Well, I, I never went to medical school, but I identify as a doctor good. and um, open my practice. So if anybody's uh, HMOs and um, uh, HOAs don't cover their expenses, I can take care of you. Oh, that's great. My, nice. my salary is now $15 an hour. Well, oh, Perfect. Yeah, I've legitimately very competitive. Yeah. I've legitimately been looking in this week to getting a, a diploma printed for me uh, from Josh Hopkins University Josh. as a medical as a medical doctor. I'm, I'm not kidding. I've been looking into where I can get a good one printed because I'm going to frame it and put it behind my desk. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, he already knows how to do this. He's I mean, he's been printing fake current and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Come uh, on, you can get the feds <laughs> watching our show now. <laughs> well, they build the audience. They, they will yeah. either way because we're pro-gun typically, so they're they're already going to be watching. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, those guys. Insurrectionists. That's yeah. a new word. That's a, that's a new hot word. Man, it last hot. year it was transphobia. This year is insurrectionist. Insurrection. Misinformation. Also, yeah. I never heard until this year. Yeah. Misinformation. Yeah. Right. I, what does insurrection mean, though? Do y'all know? Something in something, you know, in, so in the surrection, I think. Okay. Like, so, so it's a surrection and then you got to be in the surrection. Okay. That's, so it's like people, guys that aren't really circumcised, correct. but there's like ba- bacteria yeah. in their surrection. Yeah. It's a, even, it doesn't even have a sized individual. An act or, it's or in instance of rising of the, in revolt, rebellion or resistance against civil authority or an established government. Interesting. Mm. Uh, okay. I, I mean, I, I don't really have much to say. It's like they made about that it. definition up for that word. Do you know? Because I, it fits exactly it, what it, they're using it for. They're, they're changing definitions. Yeah. Yes. Like herd immunity. The, I don't know if it was the WHO or the CDC, one of them changed the definition of herd immunity on their website. Oh. Nice. Do that, we, that's science. Do we know? what the new definition of it is? Is it really it, just immunity it, once we tell you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that. You're yeah. going to get our show taken off the air. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the new definition involves the V word. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah, the oh, new definition. Well. I thought it was pretty interesting. I was I was going down the rabbit hole on, um, on uh, the uh, C-19. Maybe we could say that. Yeah. Yeah. We can. I was going... State by state, and I was kind of looking at it because uh, the not I can't say president elect anymore. Actually, the president. Interesting. Uh, he was talking about mandatory mask mandates across all fifty states, and I was thinking first: does the president really have the authority to do that, or is it more of a suggestion for political purposes? Mm-hmm. So, oh my gosh, I'm the president. I'm going to write this mean letter to the population that elected me, and. Um, then I started thinking about it. It's like, I don't think he actually, I don't think they can do that. And when I say, when I, when I say that it's because are they going to, how are they going to enforce that through this? States? Well, did you read it? Mm-hmm. Because, because how, it's very, it's very, the headline is not what it actually is. Mandatory mass ma- mandate is just mandatory mass inside government buildings, which already exists. Yeah, that, Anytime that already exists. I went into the the, uh, sh- the city hall of Bernie, I had to wear a mask. Like, yeah. that's no different. Inside yeah. a government building, which they own, they're mandating that you wear a mask. Well, yeah, and your probation officer is always wearing one. So every time you've gone there, <laughs> like you've, he's always wearing one. I don't, yeah. He, she, I'm sorry, I don't mean to identify um, automatically with the probation officer. Your fictional probation officer is male. <laughs> but in this scenario, I want to make sure I'm hitting this right down the fairway with your fictional <laughs> probation officer, not assuming their gender. Their gender. Got yeah. him. Got we're him. we're 2021 safe here. We are. Yeah. We are. We but, say nothing and we stand for nothing. Although if you don't know yet, our guest today is Mr. J.P. Sears, medical doctor, self-proclaimed mm-hmm. doctor. You're also uh, an anchor, yes. uh, a news anchor. Yes. You're a spiritual advisor. Yeah. Astronaut as well. Astronaut. Wow. Have you I, been to space? I identify with a lot of locations in space. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's so many autonomous zones in space, right. really. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, go on, go on. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I mean, you have it. You're a pet doc. You're a pet psychologist. Yeah. Um, that one, I'm, I'm impressed. I'd like to hear more about that. Like, do you, you really dive into people's pets you know, and most, how they're feeling? Yeah, most pets, believe it or not, they have uh, abandonment issues. Uh, close to a hundred percent of household pets were actually kidnapped from their birth families. Right. And that's- 100%. 100%. That is a, 100%. That is a landslide very, of a figure. Very yeah. traumatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of, lot of money in pet psychology. And um, we're also working, you know, with the new administration on a pet mask mandates as well. Right. So with the pet psychology, when, pe- when pets lose their identity by wearing a mask, they forget about the emotional trauma that their true identity carries. So we're killing, killing everybody with one stone. Oh, yeah. killing all the freedoms. Wow. Killing this all is, the freedoms. It's yeah. not two two freedoms. It's all the freedoms. One yeah. stone. What? Yeah. And I'm uh, curious for you guys. Like, what are the freedoms that you guys hate the most? Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, that's like cre- credit credit card debt. Freedom <laughs> or loan, yeah. loan. Yeah, the, the ability that I have that I am yeah. able to take out loans and then I have to pay the, for them. I hate that. The yeah. freedom That's that right. I hate the most is called the my tax freedom. Yeah, mm. tax you know, freedom. like I, you know, the the me being not only so compliant but honestly over compliant. What I like to do is you know give more money, yeah. you know, in taxes. But it's abundance. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, because it's a, it's a because. Bribe. Because who knows how to spend my money better than me? I'll tell you who. Other people. Yeah. The United yeah. States government. Yeah. The United and who are the brightest, smartest people in the United States? Bureaucrats. Yes. Yeah. And the most emotionally stable as well. Yeah. Seemingly. They're the emotion they are the most emotionally stable. And I think they're emotionally the most intelligent. Emotionally intelligent, intellectual. Yeah. Uh, name me Hard-working. one Hard-working. politician that you guys don't look up to. Personally, like there's just one, mm. just one, you know, that I like, don't look up to. I mean, I mean, once Reagan left office, right. it's like, you can't come up with one. Yeah. Probably Madison Cawthorn, but that's just because he's at a lower plane. Right. Well, yeah. when I see, <laughs> but when I see, when I see, like, like, I like the fact like the penguin, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, when he's like waddling around and uh, you know the 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 Senate floor. I, I think one. This is really interesting. You know that he's there. Obviously, the penguin. The penguin. Yeah, you guys have seen the penguin. No, who's the penguin? Nadler. Have you guys not like paid attention to? <laughs> I, I am not educated enough to. I've pay, seen no pick Nadler. Up, hey, Dave, bring up a picture of uh, of Nadler and show these guys what the this fucking dude looks like. <laughs> He is a, boy, he is a specimen of health. But I like to remind people, you know, why would you not question your government when they've done great things? Yeah. I mean, they, they've, they've obviously, they instituted the, and you're a nutritionist, so you'll understand yeah. this, the food yeah. pyramid. Yeah. Right? They're, they have fixed American health. Yeah. With by, the food pyramid. Why are grains on the bottom? That don't make sense. Yeah. What? You know, they, well, they've cured people from not having diabetes. Mm. It's like, a, how do you, like, I have a condition. I'm not diabetic. What do we do? Here's the food pyramid. You just like 36 <laughs> servings of grains a day <laughs> and you're good. Is, did you learn, the, did you learn this in nutrition college? We, yeah, we, uh, I did. I yeah. did. Wow. Yeah, I graduated uh, top of my class. Actually, by top, I mean 76 out of a class of 85, which right. is also... The, the bottom of the pyramid, though. That's the fat side. It is. So it in is. nutrition college, that's the side you want to be it's in. Where the power is. Yeah. 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 You're yeah. the bottom. Yeah. You're the cornerstone. Technically yeah. speaking, you're, you're the, the cornerstone in the pyramid. That's the, the way I would go. The, the absolute foundation. Yeah. yeah. And the foundation is the most important part. Uh, mm-hmm. 36 servings of grains. I'm. Am I getting that? Yeah, we. Uh, you're getting. Is this the, why I'm you're, getting you're, you're kind of getting both, like what you really need. You're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of your grains. Yeah. You know, and then you're getting a lot of your um, Male saturated fat serum. So it's, yeah. you're, oh. you're kind of on that di- on that diet where it's a lot of grains and saturated fat, which is really kind of like, well sugar. So mm-hmm. grains, I don't do a lot of sugar. No. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I, I think one of the things uh, JT and I were talking about earlier today when we were going through the food pyramid, aspartame's not on there. Right. It's like, what are we doing here? Like we, we have grains, which is great. We have, you know, healthy fruits and vegetables like barely on there. Great. But where do artificial sweeteners, where do they lay? I mean... I would like to see the ability for like PepsiCo to be able to sponsor a portion of the government food pyramid. Or <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you could buy a section, if you could buy a section right? and put like Pepsi products Pepsi and Taco Co- Bell in it. Taco Bell, like it's <laughs> just it's a company food pyramid. Like, why are tacos number three? <laughs> well, wow. hey, what about people? tacos? The new taquito is number three in the pyramid. Where's taurine in this? Yeah, great that's, question. That's, yeah. I mean, that's a big portion of a lot of people in America's diet. Taurine. Taurine. Is that in right. pre-workout? That is in Monsters. Okay. Or any energy drink out there yeah. that uses taurine as a majority of whatever it is that they put in those things. Did you guys yeah, get but... Nadler up here? You guys get that picture? In... Yeah. Can you, can you show it to can us? Show just, it to us? Yeah, just, so point he's, it, just point it to us. He's the guy playing distance. the penguin in the next no, Batman movie? No, he's the penguin in... Government. He okay. is. Like he literally, I think. Oh God. But no, you got to get a full body on this guy. Get like, a full uh, body. Uh, naked. Naked. FBM. These are the guys that are in charge of the food pyramid. They're going to solve your health problems. And number one is it, the rule in good leadership. Oh my God. You call yeah. that man garbage pants. Yeah. <laughs> he, like number one in good leadership is do what I say, not what I do. Yeah. That's, that's, that's actually rule size number one. Over Jocko puts tarp. that out every week. Do what I say, don't, not what I do. And the, yeah, yeah, that's, I, I think that's the ethos of self-responsibility and how to not have any. I heard that Jocko, when he wakes up every morning at four 30, the first thing he does is hurl a car battery into the ocean. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why does he do that. I don't know, but I mean, Jocko does it, so I started doing it. Yeah, yeah. We, it's you brought wake me up. good luck. Yeah, it's the good luck. It's it's good luck car battery. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> I do that just driving down the road every day. You you, you got to get a good old car battery and yeah. drive down the road and throw it out. It's your lucky rabbit's foot for the day. That's what I say. It's one a day. We one are day. saving the planet. <laughs> Because we're getting rid, we're moving the car battery from where it was originally. Yeah. Well, that's great. JP, <laughs> I have a real question for you. Or real. Real as they get anyway. Real. Um, what did you do before you got into comedy? So I was doing a combination of life coaching, personal training, and nutrition coaching, right. believe it or not. And, a real nutritionist. Well, technically not nutrition coach. So I was okay. much less educated, uh, but with the best of intentions. And I was teaching courses around the country and around the you know, different countries as well for an awesome organization called the Czech Institute, founded by Paul Czech and holistic health, holistic um, exercise and nutrition. So yeah, man, I was doing teaching those courses and working with a one-on-one clientele for about 13 years before wow. I was doing comedy. And during that time, I was telling myself like, mm, it'd be a bad idea to let my sense of humor out professionally. Right. Like that would discredit me. And then, but you know, I just kept having these ideas come to me to convey messages through the language of comedy. And, you know, comedy's always been rampant in my personality. I just was constipating that for my profession because I thought I was insecure I thought like, wow, I'll be discredited if I'm also funny. Right. But eventually I'm just like, well, no, I got to make this video because I think it's a good idea. And just like the creative impulse, it's just like a strong bowel movement. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's coming. Right. You just let it out or it's just going to come out of its own accord. Any gas station (laughs) attendant. When they like, oh, tell me the bathroom's you'll, closed, you'll it's like, that key. Give me it's, the key. Either, it's either on the floor baby's here coming. or it's in their broken yeah. bathroom. You yeah. choose. <laughs> so, man, yeah, that work, like, I mean, the, the values of health and people taking control over their lives with how they treat themselves nutritionally, their lifestyle, as well as their mind and emotions, taking self-responsibility. I loved that work and something even more meaningful came along. So eventually I had to let go of something good in order to embrace 
something better, oh. at least for me. October of 2014. Yes. Do you remember what date in October? Well, it wasn't the second. Was it the 19th? It was the 5th. The 5th. Yeah. What are you Close. talking about? When, when I released my first comedy video, oh, it was wow. October 5th, 2014. Ever. In yeah. 14? 2014. Really? Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Because um, it, it was probably... We were oh, watching no, it. Oh, no, we were watching it. Yeah, yeah we, we were, watched yeah, the first one. We, you're right. We, we, shared, you, we shared it all around internally yeah. the day Did it you? came out. Who is this guy? Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're right. Man, it, it, I'm flattered. Because I look back on that video and I, I still, I look at like the ideas I was conveying. It was how to be ultra spiritual, you know, pointing out the ego right. in the spiritual worlds. I love the ideas, but the way I presented it, it's like, I didn't know what I was doing. And in some of the scenes, I even had the script still on the table because I just didn't even think like, oh, I should move the script. That's awesome. I didn't know what I was doing, but yeah, man, it kind of opened the door of creativity in me. Yeah, that, that's like, that was right you around the same it, time. You sent it out to, to me and Matt. Yeah, because my wife, my wife yeah, gave it to me. You were like, me. oh yeah. my God, look at this. Look, look at this, then, yeah. My wife sent it to me in the night. You know what I did? I, I sent him a Facebook message for that, that minute. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is, is, is that true? It hasn't come. It hasn't come through yet. It hasn't come through come back yet. then. It hasn't right. come through. But when it's I see there. it, I'll respond. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it got it got suck sucked or yeah, suck yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't want us to meet. Zuck That's what we finally yeah. did now. Now that he has moved to Texas, and the you know the energies are are pulling. Yeah. My wife was way more excited for me to meet you. Like she, my wife was like, "Oh my god, really? Oh my god, get a lock of his oh, hair." Gosh. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> she did the same thing around what Tim Kennedy too. She's like, "You're gonna meet Tim Kennedy," and I was like, "Yeah, like of course." Oh, fucking man. super cool. I don't know what, what you're talking about. Yeah. You know? Does she... I, I'm curious how personally you take that. Very. Look at yeah. him. He's sweating. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I do. I, I take it really... Well, she knitted Tim Kennedy a, a, a cashmere stocking cap. Has which she ever I thought knitted was weird. you one, Evan? Yeah. I mean, they never seem to fit right. They're always for much bigger heads for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Almost as if like they're rejects from others that she's just kind of giving me. Yeah, but they're, she, they're probably not. He did not, find though. some very, yeah. you know, some very lewd photos that had Tim Kennedy's head photoshopped yeah. onto mm -hmm. the photos uh, on the iPad. Well, the, I, the it's probably, iPad. I wouldn't find it offensive if she maybe like took my face and photoshopped it onto like Tim's body. Yeah. But when no, no, she no, just she's replaces Tim's around. body and face with into, like pictures yeah. of our family. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's strange. You well, know, yeah, that's I mean, a family a situation like this. I, well, I as a life coach, please. Well, I think your you wife's just being inclusive, really. Right. And and I'm also curious, like, just, you know, if you were, if you were just guessing, like, what do you think she likes, you know, better about Tim than you? Like his body, yeah. I'm sure. You know, oh, like his, his body's abdominal. way better than yeah, yours. Yeah, it is way better. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a delicious body. It's delicious. Yeah, it's delicious. yeah. yeah. yeah it's like a, there's, you, you don't even have, you can't even say 16 pack for that. There's so many muscles no. in there. They have yeah. a They're like mini fists. fists. I mean, I like mini think, fists that are punching out from the stomach. I think we stomach. should call Tim Kennedy's abdomen the, the Milky Way. Yeah. Because it is full of new galaxies of muscles. Yeah. Now, impossibilities. Impossibilities as well. Yeah. Yeah, just like his face, you know, his body, yeah. stuff like that. But well, I, I mean, like, personality. It was so, a yeah, man was that would make Edward Norton blush. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, I mean, yeah, like, I, I not uh, don't take this personally, but Please. like, your wife would be better off with Tim, right? <laughs> I've said that lots. I've said that yeah. a lot. Unfortunately, Tim hasn't really made the first move. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. I keep trying to put them together. You know, because yeah. I'm more of a connector. I like yeah, to see people networking. happy. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I like to see people happy, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I'll watch them from afar through like, you know, one of those old, old sailor uh, periscope looking yeah. things, you know, like it, I'll watch, I'll see their families and, and my most kids people's playing wives with Tim. wouldn't let them even do that. And no, I think that's generous. I mean, my kids will be happy too because he yeah. seems like a great, great father. Great father, oh, yeah. Teaching such a good dad. so many skills, right? Yeah. Life skills, like like farming skills, yeah. Yeah. like very good advanced values. Math mathematics skills. Right. Like he is the American dad. He yeah. could really dig in and make a difference over there. Yeah. I think yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, 
Like my wife has said stuff like that. I'd really like Tim to come out and dig in and make a difference over here. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that she's talking about some type of farming activity. Yeah. Well, in, like with, you know, how your your kids are a little kind of like um, challenged by the way you've raised them. Correct. Yeah. Like, I mean, do you think Tim could probably even undo that kind of oh, stuff? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Just for with sure. good yeah. parenting. Yeah. yeah. Make yeah. them Good feel parenting. really loved and valued mm -hmm. as children. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, he's capable of love. Like, even without giving them gifts. Yeah. Right. Like, you wouldn't have to buy the love. It would yeah. just be natural. Like, he you, mm -hmm. would, it would spend flow, time with her kids. It would flow from the abdomen muscles through the body mm -hmm. and then ultimately into my wife and out <laughs> into the kids. And then there'd also potentially be new kids. In the, Correct. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? You, like a yeah. bigger family, ultimately. Yeah, you're propagating you, a crop yeah. of yeah. children that are that have extensive genes. If I um, could contribute to more Tim Kennedy children in the world, yeah. why wouldn't I want to do that? Right? Yeah, like that seems it's, like it's a fair, fair thing. And there's, there's probably, I think, there's legally a process you could go through to like emancipate your relationship with your children, and right. Tim could like you know legally adopt them. Yeah, right. That's a good point. It's almost like irresponsible to not do that. Actually, I kids. think there should be a movement in America for most people men to donate to their children, their children to, to Tim Kennedy, Tim Kennedy yeah. to raise them. Tim Kennedy learns how to play a flute, and the children all gather once yeah. he plays that flute, and then they wait for their. Now you just lessons. made it creepy. What? Like it was perfectly normal while we were talking about it earlier, but now he's. Tim's not yeah, he's got music. a fucking flute and he's yeah. like bribing the children with music out of the town. Like, yeah, it's weird. He doesn't dri drive an ice cream truck either. Uh, didn't know he sure didn't doesn't. think that was the weird part of this you conversation. You went but... super weird okay. with Tim the, Kennedy the playing a fucking flute. We're just line. trying to have an adult conversation. <laughs> Make a note JT. of that one. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Tim Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Sheepdog Response Training. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you just recently went to one of those, right? I did. How uh, was it? Phenomenal. So right. I, I came in there a blank slate. I had just bought my first gun like three days before. Never really shot a gun before. Never did any level of self-defense. So I enjoyed going in there as a blank slate and... I was blown away, you know, so empowering with the tactical training with guns and then, you know, the, the jujitsu training, a lot of the, like a lot of it was jujitsu based with the hand to hand stuff. So dude, I loved it. And you know, you, you're learning from world-class people. Of course, right. Tim's there is the whole instructor team. Like these guys are weapons. And there's also the mental component of situational awareness where you're not just equipping people to be dangerous assholes. Right. You're equipping people to be smart. have skills in a intelligent way. So yeah. And I think walking away from the training, one of the most important takeaways for me is realizing how incapable I am. Mm. You know, a, a weekend of training, cool. That's just the Start. Uh, just the start. And, you know, they were very upfront, like these skills are perishable. If you don't use them, right. you will lose them. So, man, it was so empowering. Yeah, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, you know, it's it it's really interesting because in the last few months, I've talked to a lot of guys who are like, oh, this is my first handgun. You know, they're going out, they're seeking training. My, my wife's at the range today, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, training with... Tim Kennedy? <laughs> Could be. It's yeah. weird because Tim posted a photo of him on a plane this morning That's saying he was weird. going to Salt Lake. Huh. <laughs> so weird. Seems to be lining up. Yeah, everything's everything's lining up. Hey, Dave, why don't we just go ahead and cut this show? <laughs> <laughs> but it, and, and I think a lot of people have bought their first handgun and they're doing these kind of trainings. I mean, I've heard so much of that happening since, you know, 2020. And I'm curious why y'all think that might be, why there's like this big swell of people wanting to get a gun and learning how to defend themselves. Well, I, 
I think the first thing is we have to protect ourselves against uh, grizzly bears and mountain lions. Mm -hmm. I think that's like number one. I and think wolf that's packs, probably the wolf, wolf packs. We just heard packs, about a grizzly teacher bears getting, and mountain lions. getting completely mauled by a pack yeah. of wolves. Yeah, so Granted, I think she was walking in when the I, when wilderness I'm, of Alaska. But hmm, when I buy any gun, I think first, bears. Like, yeah, well, first, I think what are the um, neighborhood. Uh, animals that I have to protect myself against. Typically, I'm like, I'm deathly afraid of tabby cats. Yeah. So, uh, I like to think and points. envision yeah. myself. Like, Splits a tabby right open. With, nice. uh, you know, really taking it to those tabbies. That's what I think. But <laughs> after that, I think the next uh, logical fear is uh, rogue planes. Yeah. You know, just like planes that you're going to have to shoot out of the sky. Yeah. With a large caliber rifle, is that you shoot them out like so they don't crash? Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So and then uh, grizzly bears, mountain lions, wolves. Uh, so are you shopping for uh, like a ZQ four? You know, you know what I mean. Like I think that that's that, that after watching fish Blackfin. After watching fish, Blackfin, yeah. I was really Whales. concerned that there would be whale problem, a whale, yeah, like a, whale. a killer whale yeah. attack, like an organized effort yeah. that would come from. The Pacific Ocean through Washington and then ultimately to Utah. Yeah. So well, you're the, gonna need something big. For the those. latest numbers I've seen is the indigenous orca whale population in Utah is through like the roof. they're extinct. Through, yeah. Well, oh. by through the roof. But they have the Great Salt extinct. Lake there. The so Great at Salt any Lake. Time, they've been breeding. I think they could get in there. Yeah. Yeah. There is an I, underground cave from sense. the Marianas Trench into the Great Salt Lake, and that's how it's fed. Yeah. Yes. It goes Whales through. have figured this out using their echolocation. Yeah, and there's zero doubt in my mind that's the case. I now being serious for <laughs> one second would be 2020 has been such a shit show, and I think it's proven to people the the uh, the fabric of security is relatively thin. So, you know, it, it's kind of the I guess using that same analogy, it's like man, you you really have to prepare to be a little bit cold and get a thicker blanket. Like yeah. it's pretty easy. So that the art of self-reliance or self um, protection, there's a wide variety of words, I guess we could use, but having a firearm when it's are right. So that's pretty neat uh, the way that works. Uh, two, I think when COVID came out, when it came out, like it was like a launch. Like when <laughs> Steve Jobs goes, came out, it was like, hey, Steve introducing Jobs the pandemic. Look at that. Uh, depending on well, your theory. I think, I think what own. you're saying is 100% accurate in the aspect that whereas there was a large percentage of American people that for the first time in their lives realized that security was not absolute. They came out and said it. There were a large, there, there were a number of law organizations, law offices, or not law fucking police departments in the United States. Law that enforcement. Offices. Law enforcement. There we go. Police departments in the United States that came out and said, we we can't respond. Mm. We won't respond. Uh, I, I think you add the conversation with defund the police and we can't respond. There's a global pandemic and there's riots going on in no. the streets. You put all that stuff together and people start to maybe get, oh, wait a minute this thing might not be as safe as I thought it was. Yeah. I had a lot of conversations with my neighbors who were fairly logical, great people that had never taught, never thought about owning a firearm. And they were like, man, I, what kind of gun should I buy? Texts, emails, people I haven't talked to in 20 years. What kind of gun should I buy? Yeah. Like, well, first of all, you need to think about how many hours of training that you have. You need to go get a you know, concealed carry course. You got to do a wide variety of things. But I think... 2020 was such a shit show that it shook people awake. And they also, I think they see the next administration coming and they're thinking, wow, I might not be able to purchase a firearm this year because of new legislation. Yeah. So I think there's a, well, I know for a fact, when I was talking to my friend yesterday who owns Alpha Munitions, it's a custom, um, not custom, it's a precision brass manufacturer. They're, they hit their 2021 numbers in January. No like kidding. Their gold numbers. Wow. Yeah. You can't buy primers. You can't buy powder. Everything's backordered. Federal ammunition is a billion dollars backordered on ammunition. One billion dollars backordered. I, I saw a thing two days ago. Like people are blaming them that it's their fault. 
Did what, you see that? Out? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Federal, because this is your fault that you're out of ammunition. It's like, wh- what? Because they didn't spend, you know, the billion dollars to build the infrastructure before because people weren't buying am- ammunition. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely their fault for sure. <laughs> yeah. Blame them. Good idea. Like, oh, yeah. God, but that's what? cool. <laughs> you know? Uh, they're trying to, you know, and they definitely don't like money because they're not a publicly traded company that runs on profit. So they're, I, I doubt they're really trying to push hard to make sure that they capitalize on all the <laughs> sales that could, sales be, going that could right be going on right now. I, I doubt yeah. that's top yeah. line huh. for all their executive this team because that makes yeah. sense. You know, yeah. hey guys. I have seen some really, really dumb arguments the last 90 days. I think this is, I think this is my capstone for the internet. Yeah, like just really, really dumb statements have been made and by people, and you wonder, federal. like, what, it's, what the fuck got you here? And what's the gist of the dumbest statements? That's yeah, what Evan was just talking about. It's people that read a headline and are quick to start flapping their gums. Is yeah. what it is. It's I, I, when I woke up this morning, I didn't have an opinion on this subject, but yeah. I just saw this headline and now I'm an expert. Yeah. Yeah. I personally, I mean, <clears throat> I think one of the, one thing that's worse than uh, not thinking is thinking incorrectly and incorrectly is just defined on thinking thoughts that aren't necessarily yours. You're just donating the software of your mind to a headline and to me, it's like getting the, getting... You're donating the server space. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Oh. Getting your news from the news, I think, is like getting financial advice from broke people. And of course, the the media, man, it, the level of manipulation, to me, it's, it's like, how is that not domestic terrorism? I don't know. I, I think one of the best mental cleanses so people can reclaim the sovereignty of their minds is going without your TV, yeah. or at least not watching the news. I haven't watched the news since I lived in Ohio in 2003. Really? Yeah, and it is great. Like, I don't know what the news anchors look like in any town right. I live in. I mean, that's all the stuff. It's still Wolf Blitzer. And <laughs> <laughs> that Brian guy that, you know, was a sniper or something. Yeah. Was, was Got sniper fire on him. I think it's interesting how the, the news anchors have somehow become, or people used to look at them as they were the person that had the information, yeah. which just a series of writers and investigators that were, or journalists that were sent around the world to collect information. You know, Walter Cronkite wasn't like, I would imagine a, a guy that was out there, you know, digging the ditches for all the great information in Vietnam. I could be wrong, but, but now I think it's, it's, it's even worse yeah. because you have, uh, the journalists, you have the anchors or whomever it might be, and then you have the blue check marks that are even dumber. Mm-hmm. I have one. So do I. Yeah. But, well, then that proves there you the go. point. Proves yeah. the point. <laughs> I, and I, I think when I see things like this, and you have people, well, I mean, we have a platform. We talk about things. Uh, now, granted, we're super funny and way more likable than those other people, but. When there's no experience-based knowledge, when there's zero capability for a person to say, I think this because, and most people think the person has a blue check mark, that means I should I, listen I, I to them. I can believe them. I can believe them. They're 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 speaking truth. <laughs> the truth power. is verified. They're speaking they truth must to be, power. They must they must be in the know. Yeah. Yeah. I need the new gum. Come on, fucker. You can't say that on the show. No, this This is is old gum. This is recorded. Yeah, it is recorded. And you guys need to provide me my nicotine gum because I cannot do anything without stimulants. We all know this. (laughs) Yeah, it is recorded. Keep going. I know. I'm seeing it. Are we still on the new stuff? Yeah, we're still on the news. Why can't we go back to the funny stuff? That was way more fun. I think we're 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 just laying the premise of the joke. I need need you to do your pet therapy shit to me now. (laughs) Because now I'm depressed. Well, I'd like to depress you more, JT. I think with... um, I think on, on that serious note, I think people are always way more intelligent than 
anybody gives them credit for. I think people, for the most part, know bullshit. Right. And, uh, you know, I think like the news and just all the manipulative media, and I'm not biased, I think it's pretty much all the media. I think people wake up like, these, these guys aren't trustworthy. And I think when you, when you lose the trust in those giving you your information, shaping your world perspective, there's like something that rattles inside. And, and I think, you know, going back to why is everybody buying a gun now? It's like, I, I think that people that we've been trusting, we know they're not really trustworthy anymore, whether, whether they have malice intent or it's just, they're not trustworthy because like, that's not our inherent perspective. And I think that's great. I think people outsourcing their truth to anybody other than their damn self is right. disempowering. Well, I also like would like to point out another a, a second and third order effect that this has brought is over the last few weeks, I've seen a number of very vigilant people that are generally listeners or fans or interested in us that are that are attacking us for not speaking about certain subjects. Like mm-hmm. why why haven't you made a statement about this? Why haven't you done this? And the answer is very clear. Right now, the social media landscape is a dumpster fire. Mm. It's miserable. It's completely negative. You're surrounded by nothing but this noise of both sides pulling the same rope in their direction. It's like, we're comedians. We're fun. Like, come come over to us to get your escape and not hear about what you've just heard 19 different opinions on all the way from your friend from high school to Wolf Blitzer on CNN. So it's like... If you if you can't look in the mirror and realize, hey, maybe it might be good for my emotional health to actually look or consume or watch a piece of content that has nothing to do with yeah. this mess. Yeah. Might be good for you. Yeah. And I think the idea of like, you know, okay, comedians, why haven't you told us what you think about this that has nothing to do with what you do? They don't really know want to know what you think. They just want to either cancel you or oh, right. like, okay, you're on a good guy. To you. On to the next. Yeah. Right. So it, it's just like a, a bear trap of a, a question. Validate my thoughts and feelings. Exactly. Or exactly. Else. Or you're or, done. Or you're done. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to cancel you. I'm going to tell all my friends. Yeah. Uh, and you're, yeah. you're a phobic of everything <laughs> there is to be a yeah, phobic yeah, that's of. A, that's a, I got deleted from Facebook yesterday from somebody. Uh, you did? Yeah, yeah, I did. Are you? How are you doing with that? Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, her name is Lauren. Um, right. and she lives in Austin, and she was, you know, one of the one of the early SJWs rolling in about the whole uh, the whole uh, doctor that that Biden appointed. That's a man, woman, whatever, whatever it is. I don't care. Doesn't concern my, me with that. But uh, she made an announcement yesterday how she cleansed her list for all the transphobic people that made comments about this doctor. And I was, I just pointed out, like, I didn't base an opinion. I just said, you know, I think transphobia is a widely misused word because I've yet to meet anybody that's afraid of a, of yeah. a trans person, like, like legitimate fear. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I am like, I'll just be there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll be the, you know, the anvil here, yeah. which is... Okay. This is a social experiment. Nobody's ever said that. Yeah, I, I wear garlic every night when I have, no, that I have is, wooden steaks. That is a vampire. That's Transylvania. Oh. You completely. Yes. I have fucked this up from the beginning because <laughs> yeah, I've always I've been I've been in the closet about this forever. I'm like I am fucking deathly afraid of. No, those are vampires. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Well, so okay. Transylvania. It sounds the same. But Super similar. Yeah. Yeah. And that's no, been where transphobia. I have completely fucked this up. Okay. <laughs> no, I am not scared. So, Okay. All right. Well, that makes me feel better. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, I'm glad we got so that out of the, the way. what's the real meaning of this? The, I don't know if anybody of, knows. Yeah. You're afraid of trans. Yeah. The, the moment that I think this is where we've gone a really stupid direction. The, this is why we call a lot of progressive people dumb yeah. is because it's like you, you just, you're, you're saying because I pose a couple questions about yeah. something because I questioned what you just said, I'm now afraid of it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm legitimately waiting for an answer because one thing that this was a really funny social experiment is two days ago, you saw a bunch of people jump on the bandwagon congratulating the first trans. I don't know what position it is. It's some head of doctor, science secretary. Is it like a mechanical type situation where they're 
replacing transmissions? No, 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 no. Because that would make sense to me too. But then head of transmissions yeah, would be a yeah, tranny yeah. person, right? <laughs> Some kind of transition. <laughs> In transmission. Maybe they're tra- Just whatever. Transitioning administrations. Yeah. So could yeah. you call it a tranny administration? Like kind of the whole administration's in a in a transition, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. Um, true. Just, I assistant health secretary. So, so the that's fact the position. checkers are in. Got yes, it. We got the okay, fact checkers. Okay. okay. But so that happened two days ago. But then yesterday, Biden signed the executive order allowing uh, any gender to compete in women's sports, yeah. both in college and high school. And I saw a lot of the same people now. Very confused and upset yeah. <laughs> with with this decision. Like I saw someone that was celebrating this a day before now saying, yeah. oh, great. My daughters now have to compete against a man for a scholarship yeah. in the college. So it's like they ate their own tail. Yeah. And there, there's, you know, to me, like if, if someone is trans or they identify as different gender, then they're awesome. Like you fucking do you and don't apologize for it. Fully support that. And there's also an assault on truth, which is where I think the questions right. deserve to be raised. And it's the assault in truth that bleeds into the identity issues. And, you know, an assault on truth, for example, is when people say there is no biological difference between a man and a woman. It's like, motherfucker, a penis and a vagina are different. Super different. That's a biological difference. Bone density. And in I, both I, are different muscle yeah. mass. Well, yeah. the other the other thing is, is I do a lot of um, research on anatomy. Typically, there's a lot of websites out there mm-hmm. where you can see the, the vagina and the penis interact with one another. Interesting. So, That's so they scientific. are different. I know, mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. they are very different because mm-hmm. they, at times, they're being put like one could be put in the other, vice mm-hmm. versa. But there's also things that look like vaginas, like like buttholes and stuff. Yeah. And then those also get stuff put on them. Yeah. So this is very technical. I think where where I kind of differentiate and understand, right? Which is there's not a lot of stuff that goes in the penises. Yeah. But there is a lot of stuff that goes in other holes. Yeah. So well, there's catheter sex. Yeah. That. I forgot what that's true. called. Intrapenis. Right? What is that? Intrapenis. No, yeah. it's it's called uh mm, I forget. No, yeah, it's called something. I would imagine that would be very painful, yeah. almost yeah. excruciating. Yeah, I'm not down with that. <laughs> I had thought about putting in a catheter at times just to avoid the bathroom just in my personal life because I don't like them. Yeah. You could call me... Bathroom phobic? I was going to say transphobic because I'm transitioning from my office to the bathroom, <laughs> but I think I'm using that inappropriately again. I'm having a hard time figuring this thing out. Yeah. <laughs> I think the... Uh, uh, <laughs> You know, I, I think it's most of our social responsibilities to put catheters in because not having one in is uninclusive to the catheter community. true. Thank you. Wait, so so now we're we're discluding an entire subdemographic of people because we're not doing it. Indeed. Is this disclude? Is that a disclude? Is that a word? It This is uh this is deep. Yeah. Because I didn't know that I was committing this this social yeah, well, I think I think most of us have the social responsibility to one Wear catheters. But yes, to mm-hmm. one, wear catheters and to uh, wear diapers. Yeah. So I think why you would you do wear, both? Because you need, I don't think all of us should be able to identify as a person that sits down to shit yeah. because some people don't either. It, it, some people and, are incontinent. Yes. Babies have to shit in diapers. Yeah. Why do we train ourselves to not? To not. And then yeah. embarrass we need the to babies. Incluse, we yeah. need to be more inclusive because and what do you, unite with the babies in the world. You and just shit our pants all day. You're just going <laughs> to pretend to have, you know, a domain tw- over your own bowels. Yeah. And I'm thinking, yes, all in truth, you were mentioning like the, you know, uh, men can compete in women's sports things. 
There was something that just like the lack of logic. Um, our dear friend, Evan, I know you go way back with her, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. She introduced <laughs> something in the... Once again, transphobic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, so, what, 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 what? How does that... Tra- she's a vampire, right? Yeah. <laughs> My, uh, I, I'm sorry. No, Transylvania phobic. That's what I'm saying. Transylvania phobic. Like, that's why I, I keep identifying as that. I, I think she's worse than a vampire. Yes, she, is. Okay. she is. She's been eating babies. You know, so she introduced like house rules. I think it was January 1st or the and 4th got, or something got, like that. Got rid of all those words. Yeah. You, you can't use gendered words like mother and father, right. son and daughter. And then Niece some guy ends a prayer in the house trying to be all inclusive with a man and a woman. It's like, you you just said we can't use gendered words in the house rules. And now you're inventing a new word that's unnecessarily gendered. It, it, when you didn't understand the definition of all men. Yes. Because <laughs> isn't all men like, like loving God or, yeah, or for truth God. And solidarity, truth, truth and solidarity. Yeah. But yeah. So the... Man, this the, is really dumb. It's hard to follow the logic because I don't think there is any. And, no. I, and I think you find there's not logic when it, like what they're doing, it's not based on truth. I don't think. I mean, there's a level of truth, like there's a bi- biological difference. There's a level of truth. like I mean, essentially what you're telling me is we we have a Congress made up of people that so far do not know how to divine words, <laughs> do not know how physics work because they think an island is going to sink if you put too many people on it. <laughs> like there's a lot going on up there. Yeah. We need to start thinking about who we're electing. Maybe we start requiring high school transcripts. I don't think that'll work. I think that, <laughs> I, I just don't think it'll work. And the reason I, I, I think where they're getting most of their lessons is, uh, is they're, they believe it, that cartoons are real. Mm. So cartoon physics. The is, physics where if I lift you cartoon, up and you lift like me up, we're floating. If I jump off a 13 story building with a fucking umbrella, I'm yeah. going to be safe. It's okay. Uh, so you're implying that you, you can't? Do no, I, I I identify as a person that can do that for <laughs> sure. Yeah, I do. I and I think most politicians typically identify as smart and uh, Com- like competent. competent. Yeah. yeah, I think they That's do. Brave they, of them to they identify want as people smart. to believe that they're smart, smart, and, competent. Yeah. Competent. and they're willing to sacrifice any morals mm. that they might have had in order to make people believe that they are moral. It depends on the the demographic, of course. Yeah. Like if they're in a African-American church, they're going to, you know, pander to that demographic. If they're at a veterans rally, they're going to pander to that demographic. If they're in taxes, they're going to put on a y'all, you know, I love that barbecue y'all, you know? Wow. It's interesting because pretty much anything you put, if you, any color on the rainbow, just kind of like they can, they can adapt to anything. It's it's really good of them. It's almost, I mean, in a mistaken way, I almost want to say like that's manipulative. Is like, it a cool I mean, no, 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 it's not. It just kind of looks that way, like when it is that way. But you sharing like that that's adaptive. Yeah. I think that's a in its moral of them it's, to yeah. kill their morals to have mm-hmm. pretend to have better morals. Well, maybe is, maybe we right? need to research the bloodlines of politicians because maybe at some point they crossbred with chameleons. Well, we all know that they did with aliens at some point. Yeah. I mean, they're alien lizard people that eat children. We all know that. I mean, that's yeah. kind of wide, wide knowledge at this point, wide, right? Yeah. Does everybody yeah. know widely known. There, uh, there's some conspiracy theorists that don't believe that, right. but or yeah. conspiracy <laughs> theorists, right? Like, what do you I've, heard, I've heard Round they've had a Earthers. rough couple days, huh? Yeah, a yeah, lot, yeah. They've been weird. fighting with each other, huh? Oh, <laughs> shit. factions. There's the, the, the conspiracy the, theories are... Yeah, the Q they, is splitting up. No, 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 no. Come they, on. They, yeah. dump, they, no. dump, they denounce Trump. Is it going to be QR? I don't know. <laughs> right? That yeah. would be interesting. QR. So I never fully understood what QAnon is supposed to be. Do y'all know the quick and dirty I think it's of the it? Deep, it's the deep state. Here's the thing <laughs> that okay. I... Here's the thing I, I do know about the last few years and... And about QAnon that I've really concentrated on, which is I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay. That's kind of the whole thing that I've like just kind of gone into and been like, uh, you know, I uh, can concentrate all my effort on things like, you know, uh, sharpening crayons yeah. with a fucking knife or uh, melting, you know, those little plastic GI Joe figures. Yeah, or I can do was. something yeah. 
like truly wasteful and read that bullshit. Yeah. So I could do either one, but you know, I just choose just to burn. We've got a QAnon and congresswoman. She, uh, who's that? she pushed forward articles of impeachment yesterday, actually towards president Biden. Oh, shit. I, who, yeah. who was that? Uh, what's her name? Yep. And is it confirmed? She's QAnon. Oh or? yeah. She, she ran on it. Really? What? And was elected. Yes. What state? Just, Man, is this just this this is like, this is like a bigger thing that this is like a bigger thing than I thought it would be, isn't it? Hey, everybody, Jeff Gonzalez is here. Why don't you come over and sit in the chair? Come on, get over here. You can't you can't say anything negative oh, against you can't say anything. You're afraid you're afraid Q is gonna come get you. Holy What's shit. Her name? Yeah, Majorie Green. And yes. does it say what state she's from? Huh? Yeah, fucking yeah. bring it over, man. Do you know Jeff? I don't. He's an Austin guy, too. How you doing? Good to meet you, brother. Meet JP. Yeah. He's a former Navy SEAL. Just don't look at him in the yeah. eyes. Okay. okay. Mm. He's got the... Uh, mm. He's had his eyes actually replaced. Georgia. Georgia. She is a from, congresswoman from Georgia. No kidding. It's great Major like, Green. shark eyes. QAnon. They're, they're like coal. They'll eat your soul. Hey, that. what's up, dude? He came down from Austin too. So you guys are both Austinites. He's yeah, a, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on, right on. So, oh, what do you know you about this Q group? Because oh. this is hey, this is like super. If 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 we would like him to join us, we need to pause for a quick second so the boys could turn his microphone up. Yeah, good. We need Just a second. Hey, so what, what, what were you saying said. earlier? There's a, there's a video out there mm. with the turkey balls. Yeah, turkey balls. Right. So. <clears throat> it's, I think it's a test to see how comfortable you are with your manhood. Right. Because if you watch it long enough, you realize that it's just some guy massaging the turkey's gobble. Right. But if you can only catch that short little glimpse, you're like, whoa, I don't need to see somebody playing with somebody else's balls. Right. I mean, I definitely don't generally need to. Well, no, that's not true. I, I, I peruse gay pornography every once in a while. Just yeah. see what's going For on sure. over there. Keep yeah. up I want to see the, if they're yeah. creative. You know you what I mean? Keep like, up I with feel times. like. Without the women, like maybe the guys yeah. get a little maybe bit they more came creative. Up with something interesting. Yeah. 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 On that note, I do wonder like when it's going to become like, you know, uh, homophobic if you don't have sex with men. I, I think we're on the way. I yeah. think we're on that way. Well, yeah, you know, sure. I recently came out as pansexual. Pan, uh, what, pansexual, what's that mean? Uh, it's pretty much everything is free game that is an adult human. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So I'm okay with, with tra uh, trans people. I'm okay with men. I'm okay with women. But I am in a committed relationship right now that is plutonic and uh, monogamous with a female. So I haven't had ch a chance. I haven't been single since becoming pansexual yeah. to try anything right. else. But it does allow me now to have a very wide vocabulary that would, wouldn't be accepted if I wasn't pansexual. I would, correct. <laughs> <I> would, <laughs> no word is off limits. The other thing that he likes to do, which I really enjoy, is when he goes into businesses and they're like, sir, you have to wear a mask. And he's like, it's okay, I'm trans. <laughs> yeah, I do. Guys. People tra generally he's transitioning from down. like wearing a mask to not wearing a mask. Yeah, so like, like, I think... That's where I keep getting hung up on these if things you too, fire, because I don't understand it. If mm. you fire back to somebody with like vigilance and eye contact, it doesn't matter what you say. And I learned this on a Delta flight. Uh, I was flying at six in the morning from Los Angeles to Baltimore. I was seven screwdrivers in <laughs> and I asked for an eighth and she said, sir, if you're going to have another one, I need you to drink a bottle of water. And right away, without a missing a beat, I looked it right in the eyes. I go, oh, I live in the Swiss Alps at 14,600 feet. Alcohol doesn't affect me the same. And she goes, oh, okay. And then wow. I had four more screwdrivers. Dude, I didn't know you lived in the Swiss Alps. Yes. I know. None of I didn't know did. alcohol didn't affect me the same as regular yeah. people. Yeah. But None of us did. just providing an answer got me what I wanted. With confidence, So I've yeah. started mm. applying that anywhere. Like, I mean, generally I'm at the DMV. She's like, you don't have the right forms. I'm like, but I gave it to Sheila an hour ago. She goes, oh, okay, here you go. Yeah. Here you go. Like, There's your license, Mr. All Rodriguez. is an answer. <laughs> 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 oh. If you give them an answer, you got a 50-50 chance you're going to get what you looked for. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I like to ask the question back to them, but I like to rephrase it. Just a little. Just a little. Yeah. So a mask are you sure? <laughs> and then this, then they just lock up yeah. and you're like, oh, control, delete. <laughs> yeah. 
That's always my favorite. Anytime you change the, anytime you ask the question back and you just kind of change a word here and there, it's like, it is like a control alt delete. It's so or, funny. Or you just, but the gentleman outside just told me I, I, I needed to take my mask off. You guys, you guys need to hash this out yourselves. Yeah. And yeah. then you just excuse yourself. Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Listen, you guys need to, you guys need Clearly to take care there's of this. Some, I'm going to be yeah, over there. Yeah. <laughs> some issues that you all need to resolve. I don't want to be a part of this, please. <laughs> no, sir. It's like a no, family dom domestic. I, I used, don't to, I used to do that to a certain major that would catch me that when I didn't cut my hair, I'd be a sergeant major. I was on my way to get my hair cut, but I don't want you to think I'm just saying that because he caught me. So I'm going to wait until tomorrow. So you know that I was doing this on my own and not because you caught me and told me to go get a haircut. He didn't know what to say. Like, like it was control. <laughs> so, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> so what I heard you say is if you say enough bullshit to someone, yeah, over talk they'll somebody. get confused yeah. and not want to deal with yeah, you anymore. So true. Yeah. It's like, I just want to disengage now. You're, you're getting way too deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much most of our conversations, yeah. I would say. I would yeah. always use Colonel Fernando. Anytime anybody tried to stop Fernando. me from doing anything, I would say, Colonel Fernando told me we need, we need to do this. And then, then everybody just doesn't want to have their hands on it. In the military, oh, fuck, I don't know who Colonel <sighs> Fernando is, but we're out. We're out. He's a colonel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. I don't want that. <laughs> Anywhere. Weekend watch is not for me. No. So, so, and then you were in the Navy. You've been yes. on our show before. I have. Yeah. yeah. When did you get out of the Navy? Oh, that was like 99, 99. I heard they partied that year. It, like it was, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Nobody knew what, what, what was going <laughs> to happen. I had to explain to my girlfriend the other day what Y2K was. She didn't know. Was, I was like, yeah. we thought the world was going to end. She's like, why? I'm like, because we didn't design the nuclear weapon targeting systems to understand four-digit year code. She's like, this doesn't make sense. I'm like, it was just two digits. They thought if it went to zero, we were all dead and they would just launch. I, She's like, what? I this isn't real. She had to Google it. Do you remember how freaked people, Dude. like oh people my God. were freaked to fuck out? It was, you, yeah. I watched they, the movie they the day after like when 10 you times. Were, <laughs> where were you at in 2000? So... In I graduated high school in 99, so I was 18, and computers, they were around in my life, but not right. so much. So I didn't understand them enough to be remotely scared. For me, it was just more entertaining, like, ah, if they you all go out, like, this out. will be entertaining to watch right. other people be very inconvenienced. Uh, so you had no clue this nuclear thing was a thing. I didn't know the nuclear thing. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. My, my dad's on submarine, I, so he was like, yeah, we don't fucking know what's going to happen. We're all sitting back just waiting, holding yeah. our breath, which is exactly what I did. Like, I remember my girlfriend at the time, we sat on this beautiful hill overlooking like the valley where the city was. And we we're just like, let's just watch and see what happens. Let's just watch. That is okay. an amazing yeah. New Year's. It was. It was so cool. We're like... And nothing. So NORAD, <laughs> NORAD has this thing that if we get hit, our missiles just launch and they already have their targets in the yeah. Soviet Union and China, everything. So the whole concept was, is when year 2000 hit and we went to two zeros, we thought, we, we predicted, the computers might think we're destroyed and just launch everything. Like, didn't they, didn't they like ever think like maybe we could have a computer scientist like look that's at this? way too smart. No, nope. yeah, I mean, you also, in 1999, like we had you know, 25 kilobytes on a floppy disk. Yeah. Like, and that was still 6,000 times larger than the computer inside the LEM that, that piloted to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> They're just I, like, let's have Cletus do the computers yeah. on this one. It was, <laughs> has it changed? <laughs> like, and my, my, my father-in-law was big into finances and they were freaking out. Mm, they yeah. were like, we're going to lose all of our money because nobody knows what's going to happen. And they were like trying to withdraw. I don't know if you guys remember that part, but everybody was oh, like yeah. trying yeah, to pull all their money. Run on the bank. Everybody like was making a run on the bank. Give me all my money. Skyrocketed. Putting, yeah, yeah, putting it back in the mattress and not trusting anybody outside. You know, if it has a computer chip, it's like, oh, it's the demons, devil. We, we can't trust it. That was hilarious. And then of course, nothing happened. Yeah. See, I, I took that the completely different way and I invested in mattress companies. Mm. So, <laughs> like a, once again, that whole that was interpretation back when people information would finance paying a twenty five hundred dollar vacuum, though. Yeah, what's that's that? True. Like, like that yeah. was back when people would finance a twenty five hundred dollar oh. vacuum. 
Why in the fuck would you buy a twenty five hundred dollar vacuum? You don't remember this age, like Rainbow Dude. and Di- and and Kirby. Yeah, like like Kirby. They come door to door. Those come that door to door. Oh yeah, Dude. but it came with a blender attachment. You're younger than I am. Because How I do you remember shit. This stuff? I don't know. I just remember my sister got one. We had a rainbow, and like it was like the pride of their household. You know, the blender. Yeah. No, no, no the, the vacuum. vacuum. The vacuum the bl- cleaner. Vacuum cleaner with a blender? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember the vacuum. Kirby could get a blender attachment. I don't remember if she had one, but I just remember so in like, 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 well, we're going to go get the Kirby. Yeah. We're going to take care of this with the Kirby. Or you know someone's got Come money because if they have, have a, Kirby. a really large matching Tupperware set. Dude, that's a yeah. weird... That's a weird. <laughs> You remember? Like, oh man, they've got all that lime green Tupperware yeah. with the freaking. You never covers. leave the house with like, those, man. Dude, that's a thousand dollar set. Dude, you guys don't are break the sack. They, they're like, they're coming. You remember, like, you remember, like, like better off dead. Problems. <laughs> you remember better off dead with the the newspaper boy. Where's my two dollars? Yeah. You leave the house with one of those Tupperware sets. Oh. You are. Yeah. You're gonna be the the receiver of that little newspaper boy that's coming to your house every day. Where's that's, my Tupperware? Where's my Tupperware? Where's my Tupperware? That's a weird flex that I'm going to start doing now and people are over at the house. I'm just going to get the vacuum cleaner out and be like, what's up? Yeah, look <laughs> at this. Then look at their power Tupperware. Yeah, Dude, yeah, I mean, like, like, this is, I'm going to power oh, yeah. top the fuck out of them over yeah. my vacuum cleaner and just be like, hey, I don't know, this is a little spill over here. I just want to get my my rainbow Kirby. out. <laughs> my rainbow. Could, me. could you imagine a picture of like Floyd Mayweather on his private jet, piles of cash, and yeah. then a Kirby next to <laughs> it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like just, like, that's it's rolling just with like the vacuum. slightly in the background there, but you yeah. can imagine, see. Yeah. Imagine what, just, what Instagram it. influencers would be like if Tupperware and vacuums this were still the, the thing. This is the fucking greatest idea. <laughs> We, we have ever had on a show just ultra flexing Dan Bilzerian photos yeah. with like with a fucking Kirby and Tupperware. Oh my god, bowling influencer on a budget. I, you yeah. know what? I, I swear to God, I'm gonna go to eBay. I'm gonna look Buy for some Kirby. old Tupperware. Yeah, and, and I, I'll just borrow my sister. Gotta get the 36 piece. She set. probably still has that Kirby, by the way. Oh, dude, <laughs> that advanced set came with the bread Tupperware. Ooh, ooh. ooh, man. Yeah, it was a long, long, thin one that you could put a whole loaf of bread in and cover it. Man. Like, <laughs> I think we were too poor for that. I well, there was a thing I, that I, would come had, door they, to they door. They would. Bullshit. I mean, yeah. And they would sell you and it would be like, oh, if you sign up now, you get a free keychain. Yeah. Like, and it's it was, like, well, I'll lose money if I don't get that free keychain. Like, yeah. like, I remember going to the Fender shop when I was six. To like get the, a new Fender? The, There's the, like the a guitar, specialized the guitar. car Fender and store. The guitar salesman like sent the deal with the fact to my dad, with the fact that it came with a t-shirt. Like <laughs> He's like, hey, you pick I'm this thing up right now. It up. comes with a soft case. And I'll throw in a Fender t-shirt. Yeah. He was like, Ooh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a deal. Wow. That and was back a in free the free pick. That was back in the day. That was they were rolling pretty I mean, hard I there with your, that the day. sales like, pitch. Remember fucking Circuit City and shit? Yeah. You'd walk in, you'd have records and tapes yeah. and, and salesmen. And do you remember there used to be encyclopedia sales people oh, yeah. come yeah. to your door? That's another flex, the encyclopedia. Yeah. Like we, oh yeah. That's it. That's what we need to make. We need like, Our own well, we need to no, we need to make a, a faux <laughs> house where we just call it the nineties flex. Dude. And it's like encyclopedias, Tupperware. Oh my god. Fucking Dude. random ass Dude. expensive. George Foreman grill. Like, come on yeah. in. That was like a the like best time to the be alive. Flex. Yes, yes, the nineties. Yeah, like, <laughs> you survived the eighties and now you're into the night. Now you know, all right, I, I lived through the eighties. Now the nineties are mine. Yeah. yeah, and I'm gonna get all this shit. Yeah, and That's I'm gonna be so fucking cool. It won't even be funny. I'm gonna have a compact disc player. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have a multi compact yeah. disc that, player. That, holds that, it, it, five in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> was that a '90s thing? Yeah, I think, oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So around yeah. 1996 is when. CDs actually became like really accessible. Like, like that's when the tape walls started going away. But I do remember going to the mall and buying Weird Al tapes and stuff. So yeah. I, you think it was 96? It seems like CDs took over a few years before like that. Like 94 is when they started showing up in stores. <clears throat> but not everybody. No not everybody. Earlier. I want to say it, earlier. It might have been earlier. earlier, but like not... It wasn't a regular thing. We don't like need fact checking here. Take yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. When hey, did it take it? The fuck Identify as somebody that understands exact year and then just mm. throw it out there. Fuck it. 2012. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was ex- <laughs> when the Mayans ended the world in 2012, CDs came out, which by the way, here's a theory for you that I identify as true. Right. December 12th, 2012, the world did end. 
But because it was so traumatic, a lot of people are just in denial. They mm -hmm. can't accept that the world ended. That's why they don't think the world has ended. But the world ended. Interesting. Truth. Oh. Yeah, that is... I can wrap my head around that. Truth to power. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the, the sense of certainty I feel in here yeah, and also not, like quick to gas. rage. No, no, yeah. no. It is gas. Have you ever reflux. heard the simulationist theory? Yes. You know, that we're running a simulation to see why the earth was destroyed. Do, do you know who puts that theory out? Uh -uh. Simulationists. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I was, so I was waiting. I was like, oh, this is going to be... I thought you were going to be like, oh, oh Jeff well Goldblum. Played. I was like, oh, well played. Well played. Ah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> that one got me. I was like, I can't wait to hear this. Yeah, who is it? I mean, you I'm never intrigued. know. intrigued. Yeah. Or we could have... We, like, also, what was it? Uh, 2013 when they fired up that... That black hole thing in yeah, Sweden. In Sweden, yeah. We yeah. don't know if we fucking sucked ourselves into a stupid universe, and now we're dealing with the stupid. I, I czar. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to yeah. look at the landscape right now, yeah. there's a yeah. strong possibility. We you got way imagine, dumber, way <laughs> faster. Imagine explaining somebody the, right now to somebody in 1986. I think about my <laughs> grandfather. Like, you know, he lived to be 89. He was born in 1916. I always think about that explaining to him identity politics and just him seeing the state of the right. world is just like, yeah, man, I don't, I, I can't comprehend how he could comprehend this. I've always wanted to do a <clears throat> skit where I'm, I'm speaking to the guy from the eighties and I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, in the future, like everybody's glued to their phones and he's looking at a rotary phone. Like, but, I don't get it. But who do you need to call? Yeah. Why is everybody always on their phones? I'm like, they spend hours, tens of hours, hundreds of hours on their phones. He's like, who are they calling? <laughs> like, and he's just staring at a phone. Why would I because stare at this phone? Because someone in 1986 would, would not comprehend uh, yeah. apps or it, internet or anything. I mean, yeah. I just finished watching the CNN documentary, the, the, the 1990s, uh, which I, I, I saw when it came out, but I watched it the other night. And, and when you watch the news in the early 90s talking about the internet. Like the news, yeah. it's Connie Chung going, it's a new thing called the internet. It's a highway that there are not cars on. Like, <laughs> like, and then they interview some fat dude with glasses. Like, so what do you use this for? Well, you can connect to other computers and just, uh, share information. Like no one got it. Just so yeah. everybody's clear. Okay. I want to put this out there. I still don't know what the fucking internet is. Just yeah. so everybody knows. <laughs> I don't know how it works. To me, it's just kind of magic. It comes in from like, you know, tubes and wires and shit. But at the end of the day, if somebody held a gun to my head and said, <laughs> how does the internet work? You can't I would define go, it. You fuck. die. Well, I don't know. Maybe, it's I really mean, just a connection to hard drives. Yeah. Well, I've got a degree in internetology. So if I may. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. What college was that? Josh, it, Josh Hopkins? You're Josh Hopkins. Yeah, over honor. So... You know how toilets work? Mm -hmm. You put poop in, you flush it, kind of goes somewhere yep. else. That's the internet. You put information in, flush it, it goes through like a plumbing system right. and winds up somewhere else. And then you can get other people's shit right. wow. coming into You can your request life. it. You can like you can request it through email, email other people's through shit. internet mail, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Internet can you mail. Yeah. Is that what email stands <laughs> for? Inter yeah, the <laughs> internet mail. E internet mail. Ethernet mail. Internet. Electronic Most mail. of the people on the internet Electronic are doing exactly mail. what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. One person <laughs> is shitting and the other person is, is downloading is the eating. other person's is, shit. Is eating. And then typically like comments, angry yes. comments, that's like someone shitting on someone else's lump of shit. Yes. And then they're eating that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's what they consume. Fuck. Yeah. We figured it out, boys. Have you guys thought about getting a website for your Black Rifle Coffee? What is no. that? So black rifle, black rifle, black rifle coffee. <laughs> I identify as a speech impediment right now. <laughs> um, it's a company that does coffee. No, no, no. The, the 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 website. What is that? So that's like a toilet. That, that like that's your toilet okay. for your shit that you can then flush and then other people get to see your other shit. Other people get to wow download they could and buy then ultimately it. have your shit. They yeah. can interact with your shit. Yeah. So ultimately, yeah. everybody idea. on the like everybody on the internet anybody with is an a, internetology degree. Everybody yeah. on the internet is a fecal file, basically. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're telling me? Or fecal phobia for those that don't use the internet. Oh. Yeah. 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 Why have we not canceled 
all people that were born and died before the age of the internet because them not using the internet clearly makes them internet phobic. True. That is, and that feels... That is deep. Yeah. It feels gross. <laughs> yeah. It does feel it gross. Is. Yes. And I had that conversation with the kids. I told them, you know, there was a time when the internet did not exist. So starry-eyed. Yeah. What? I'm like, yeah. There was no... There was no internet. There was no such thing as an iPad. There was no such thing as an iPhone. And you actually had to go outside and do things. What? Yes. Land crops. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm envisioning is you having this speech with random children on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yes, and they're all handed, going like, why I'm, is that crazy old man? I'm handing them candy. He's telling me there's no internet. I mean, true story. Okay, here's a true dollar, story. sir. Uh, please leave me alone. Yeah. You know, that go buy, homeless guy go just tried to tell me there's no internet. But it's fascinating. Do you not miss the old days of like, electronic salesman going into circuit city was an experience because Ooh. you had a dude with a shitty suit <laughs> rolling in beeline and like you look like you need a new tv yeah let me show you this 28 inch tube 28 <laughs> boom <laughs> 18 selectable channels there bub <laughs> and a volume numb you act now and i'll throw 36 in this payments remote. 144 dollars and we'll throw in a free remote it, it's fun that like TV salesmen were needed. It's like someone walks in, it's like, uh, uh, how's this TV work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, do you have electrical outlets in your house? Okay, yeah. Okay, well, it plugs in there. It's like, okay, and then what else does it do? Yeah, but do you remember the walls, the big TV walls yeah. inside, like these electronic stores? Like, and they would hang out over there and wait, oh, yeah. for, wait, for, a, wait for a middle-aged male dad bod rolling in to start was, browsing. Was it a 40-year-old virgin? Yeah. Weren't they oh, TV salesmen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were. <laughs> I need to go back and watch that. Yeah, yeah that they were. Was You're right. awesome. I don't, uh, I don't remember going into... Never? No. I, well, I grew up in a very small town. I can't... They, I don't think they we had Circuit TV. City. No, yeah. absolutely yeah. not. We had a JC Penney's. That was so like, you watched the TV through a window. That was a real. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't remember. Well, we never went TV shopping, so that could be it. I don't know. I don't remember this. All I know is. I mean, I don't think we ever I'm, went TV shopping, but we did go into Circuit City for like some records. No, or, we had Sears. Yeah, I think that oh, would be man. there. We had we had Sears, so that was well, the closest you, that we had. Great to be yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Any relationship from the Sears family? Are you the heir to the Sears? Bankruptcy. Yeah, identifies. I am. Yeah, uh, he's in debt. Yeah, the debt's incredible, and uh, you know it's been a good run. But you know, washers <laughs> and dryers, retail—it's just—it's not what it used to be. Could you uh, imagine if you like you turn eighteen and your grandfather goes, "Here you go, JP, one hundred and eighty-six million dollars in debt." <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! It's yours now. It's yours now. Hey, <laughs> thanks for the untrustworthy fun, grandfather. <laughs> The yeah. enterprise is yours, boy. <laughs> These leases are due. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna need to I turn got this my thing lesson around. for a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oof. Yeah. I'm trying to think what was like the big the big draw for TVs back then. Like, you know, what what kind of like sold what was the sales pitch? Well, I mean, that first it was just going to well, a flat a flat yeah. screen. Yeah. Like that was big jump in technology for a while in the 90s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like going from the the very round two yeah. to ooh, you we now have a projector, a rear projection. Remember, yeah. like when you're the, you the, the rich open. guy in the neighborhood had that giant projector one that was like you know still only forty four inches. I broke a lot of things as a kid because I wanted to know how they worked, and the TV was one of them. Mm -hmm. I remember I kind of went in the back because we had that big like a TV that was the size of this table. Yeah, mine weighed like and it had like a phonograph pounds. in one side. Right, and I remember. I got to learn how this thing works. And I undid the back panel and the whole thing falls off and you see everything in there. And it was like, whoa. I mean, my first cable box- I want to touch all the wires. A hundred buttons, zero, one through a hundred. Well, that's how you change the channel. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> 32 was MTV, 28 was Nickelodeon. Wow. Wasn't 34 MTV? I did not, not, not in California. Okay, I okay. never had cable- like, I didn't have cable either. I was deprived. I had to go to a friend's house to watch all HBO porn. That was, <laughs> was kind of what my life was like. It's awkward masturbating with friends. It, it is. is. I'm telling yeah, you. But that's see, why you, you build a fort this. with cardboard between pillows. each of you. Yeah. Pillows. We would yeah. have our own little pillow own channels yeah. as right. we're watching all the HBO, you know, late at night movies. Yeah. Those were the special ones. So you guys used to 
masturbate with your friends? Definitely did. A yeah. Lot. I mean, yeah. how did you, like, what, what yeah. was your rite of passage? Yeah. Definitely wasn't that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, who did you masturbate with? <laughs> um, if they weren't your friends. They were, there were a lot of years after my grandmother passed away as a younger boy. I thought that she was in heaven looking at me. So I really didn't jerk it because I was really afraid that she was going to judge me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck, I'm not doing this. Why do you think your grandmother would want to watch you masturbate? <laughs> well, when I was a child, I, I just assumed she was just watching all the time, you know, because she was she always knew very nosy. Trouble. Yeah, a very nosy woman. So I just figured she carried that. But do you think that she carried that type of attitude watching? into her afterlife? And then, mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know. I wasn't going to take... I wasn't going to take the chance. Well, you don't think she would see what you were doing and then continue there's, to be there's like, no, oh, I'm just going to take a seat on this There's one. no way that you can <laughs> rationalize <laughs> that. You know, as a 26-year-old male, you don't have the cognitive <laughs> ability to think like that. Yeah. Well, you know, looking back, I can see your logic. Yeah. That, was, that was, you know, righteous it was logic. A rush, rough time. Yeah. Yeah. That was rough. Mm -hmm. Wow. Was. Taking a back seat for grandma. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You she, sacrificed a lot. I did. I mean, there were a lot of dark years. I mean, <laughs> truly, truly dark years, you know? Yeah, starts to rot your brain. Yeah, uh, but, you know, as long as, as long as I had the, the couch cushions, you know, pushed together really tightly. It was interesting because I used to always, you know, tell my dad that I'd, I'd spilled my cereal on the couch again. And it's just a messy child, you yeah. know? It's a messy child. He's like, messy there hasn't been milk in this house for two messy weeks. Messy and sticky child. It's like I spilled my cereal and all my socks again, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I spilled my uh, cereal in my sister's underwear drawer again. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> when, when you guys were ki when you guys were kids or twenty six for Evan, yeah. were you ever sold the the myth that you'll go blind if you masturbate? I, I heard tested it. that theory. Yeah. Did, yeah. I felt yeah. like that was in my youth. I felt like my science was strong, scientific deduction was strong, and so I wanted to test that theory. Yeah, I had a very, you know, good kind of like. Program to test that theory. Mm -hmm. It was involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it involved a lot. Yeah, I would think like if you if you hypothesize like all right, it it'll take exactly. like what at least twenty masturbations <laughs> to be completely blind. Oh, that's those are JV numbers. I yeah, right. hypothetically. But yeah. after you know three or four, you'd start to notice if your eyesight's going to dim. So you mm -hmm. could either pull the plug or just well, go full commit. I have a theory that it was a delayed effect because I'm. Pretty much blind now. Yeah. So I by think, the way, I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am pretty much blind. So maybe there was some truth to that theory. Damn it. Are you a professional firearms instructor? Yeah, but I don't really need to see that well. Okay. Got it. I that use the sense. force. As yeah, long yeah. As so I mean, those of us that are right skilled direction. use the force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, identity politics within firearms, I'd imagine, is interesting. It's like, no, I identify right. that as the target. It, I mean, it, I have everybody tell me that all the time. No, I want, I don't want those standards. I want easier standards. Yeah. And I'm like, well, who am I to deny you your self-satisfaction? Yeah. I think that's an interesting scenario for a person that, to be able to just identify with whatever they wish. Because you can, you can say, I'm a doctor now, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, I'm a professional firearms instructor. I just identify I as do that person. Yeah. If you... Where there is a will, there is a way. Now it's where we just, where there's a Say wish, things. there's a way. Yeah. I just well, wish. Have we ever imagination. thought of this? Yeah. Have we ever yeah, yeah. thought of, of extreme self-esteem firearms classes where we do three times the size silhouettes made out of silver steel? That way you can't see where it hit, but it's three times the size. So they just hear the noise. They feel like they're doing well. Really good this, stuff. So we can market that as you will come and shoot with us and feel great about yourself. Because that target is the size of that wall. I typically, I'm very, <clears throat> I like to think of myself as a nurturing instructor. I, I like to nurture. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all the students out there will, will support that. Sure. They'll say that. 
that I'm, I nurture when I'm on the range. So I think that would be a good suggestion. I that think that's be. what people want out of a firearms instructor, so like true. a nice nurturing like energy. Someone like, that really like, like, embraces. Yeah, could you cuddle me yeah. here as I cuddling shoot is, this deadly weapon? Cuddling is a, is, a, is a, you know, it's an underrated adult learning technique. Yeah. It's very underrated. It's also a combat skill. Well, really. it can be. It's like the new jujitsu. I it's think friendlier. so. It also has, you know, a positive versus a negative outcome. You right. Know, like there's a positive when I'm coddling you and cuddling you. you coddle get, cuddle. Coddle cuddle. That could be the entire method. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Coddle cuddle. Coddle cuddle. cuddle hey, cuddle. come to the coddle cuddle pistol course mm. where we will cuddle. Standards you. need not apply. <laughs> right? Standards. You know, we'll, we'll, we're going to shape you Kids. up and we can't hold you down. We can't hold you back like that. We can't yeah. hold you back. We work on the honor own. system. Hmm. Yeah. Therefore, you get a pen and your score sheet, and we just hope that you're honorable. Just turn them in yeah. at the end of class. Yeah. You don't even have to shoot to get your score. Just like what, what, what do you think been? that you would score? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the funny thing is, is there's a lot of men, and this started happening earlier. Like I think, um, is it Don Shipley? Shipley, yes, Don Shipley. Shipley, Shipley. Shipley used to he he. He was identifying guys that were identifying as Navy SEALs yes. way before it was cool. It was cool. Yeah. And now all those guys need to be socially acceptable, like because accepted because they were, they were leading, just identifying. They were like, leading they had their, tridents and the medals and everything. They were they before their time. Everybody. They were leading the they progressive movement. They were leading, the progressive, leading the progressive movement. You're right. I could identify as whatever I want. I don't have to put in the work for it. See? I I'm mean, good. It's a, you know, there's really doesn't even need to be selection criteria for any special operations unit anymore because not if you want it, no. if you want it bad enough, yeah. just identify it. Yeah, I, you know what? The more I think about it, it's a brilliant strategy, I and mean, we could we could apply this towards everything. How much does a Trident cost? Well, maybe like eight dollars. I think so. I okay. mean, that's probably too expensive. That's now. the barrier of entry, and it is. That's what I'm looking at. They, it's too they should get rid of that barrier of entry and give them. Away Everyone. because there's an economic barrier of entry even on the $8. It's so true. So, yeah, why are, we, why are we handcuffing ourselves to only six SEAL teams? Yeah. There should be There's a thousand. Sh- yes. Oh, I think there should be one and in every town. I mean, what, what would other countries think of us Imagine if they that. knew that we had a Navy SEAL team in every town? And right. I think everybody, everybody would be safer on the battlefield because yes. like right now you just have these people that are trained, they had to meet standards, which is so hateful and yes. uninclusive, which really creates a dangerous environment on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. But if you just have like everybody it who- breeds identi- an ego. Yeah. And you can't have ego on the battlefield. Everybody needs to be the same. Yeah. So right. true. Uniformity. That's well, the that's first the whole step point of behind the fucking, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the, the service. Whole- Uniformity. We need everybody to be uniform. Therefore, delete the standards and everybody that wants to be is now. Mm-hmm. We need more SEAL teams. I can't wait for this, this entire concept to, to really translate through the entire professional environment where maybe surgeons can just say, why? I mean, that, that takes a long time. Why do we and have a, a limited lot number of, of surgeons? Work, Imagine if right? we could get rid of all that debt as like well. You can, you, can, you can eliminate all this. Yeah. And this is what happens. Eliminate college debt by just allowing people to identify as whatever profession <clears throat> they want. And that gives and us more doctors. Way more yeah. surgeons. It's Everybody's making more money. Go. It's right? clearly because the way to go. If, you just, if we woke up tomorrow and there was 100,000 new doctors that are all getting new doctor, like, like doctor wages... Mm-hmm. Everybody's making. We don't have to raise the minimum wage. You don't need a minimum wage. No, no because everybody's making the They're, money that they deserve. We, in in a, a question, and I hate to be like Mister Pessimistic with this, but like, do you guys see any downside to this? No, not really. No, I mean, no, our numbers uh-huh. are up. The economy is up. Yeah. Everybody's paid a better wage. Yeah, I mean, we have. There we might have be some losses. Millions of new United States Navy SEALs millions, overnight. Millions. You could be a surgeon SEAL, oh my astronaut, God. astronaut, physicist. Oh. All in an afternoon. And you don't have to be All Asian. In afternoon. And you don't have to be Asian. Yep. <laughs> but wow. if that's who you are. But if yeah. you identify, it's, it's okay. Right. Mm-hmm. See, like the downsides, yeah, you know, you just, you got to kind of look past the downside of all those people dying because of malpractice. And think about the good, which is all those new doctors and their- It would dilute, the, mal, it would yeah. dilute it, the malpractice. It, 
And, and may, it's may, true. May I suggest that malpractice feels hateful to me? Yeah. Ooh, so what, what if point. it's just like transition to like it's it, it's not malpractice. It's just like a different creative expression of how yeah, to cut you people's were, flesh. You were trying something new, right? Yeah. Right. That Innovating, could be work. Really? In, in, yeah. Yes. How does someone? How does one innovate surgery without like, the risk of getting sued for malpractice? Like the Elon Musk of surgeons. Yeah. So yeah. True. For crying out loud. For sure. Yeah. We're gonna beta test this new technique on, on you. you. <laughs> you know? Just imagine how privileged you would be to be that beta tester. That would be awesome. I, mean, I think honestly, I think it's worth it. Yeah. I do. I think it did, could definitely fix a lot of our society's work. For sure. Yeah. I mean, Overnight. Yeah. It's there's a lot of problems. There's and, a lot of positives here. And homelessness, with all of a sudden oh, they're see, all surgeons I, now. I, I get offended by that word. By, a, by that a word. house. Yeah, yeah, yeah because they would they would have good credit. Homelessness. Like, it's, it's a I, I if you are a it, doctor, a medical doctor with zero uh, education debt or college debt, you have amazing credit. Yeah. Therefore, you can uh, you could get a, a beautiful house. Yeah. And and if I may hold space for you real quick, Jeff. Um, you mentioned you you felt like hurt by the word homeless. I did, yeah. I, I'd like to own that and apologize on behalf of society. You know, homeless. Right. How about home more? That's what right. I'm Let's saying. Let's not lessen these people. No, that's true. We don't That's need what to, I'm trying to say. We don't need yeah. to be that giving less, them. It's so, it's so like negative. It is. So Shelter negative. challenged? Yeah. yeah. But not, not challenged. Less, yeah. Not more, challenged because too much. It's a, shelter it's, is succeeding. It's, it's, I feel it's like a, it's a lifestyle choice. Shelter, shelter choice. Shelter choice. Shelter capable. But let's, let's give them some credit. Okay. Shelter accomplished. There uh, you go. Uh, because that's what they wanted. Yeah, they yeah. wanted to be without home. Yes. yes. Mm. I like that. Yeah. And really, yeah, it's minimalism at its Makes me feel good. Yeah. Minimalist. Yeah. Minimalist. It's it, it's trendy. It's yeah. on focus. It's anti you know capitalist anti anti materialism like mm -hmm. minimalist. Minimalist. They're minimalist. There you go. I think that's we should all strive for that. They need to go through a big rebrand. Yeah, is what they, they should. Um, I don't know why they haven't hired a PR company. They yeah, to, because they, this could really turn around their situation. Wow. One of the things I'm learning from this conversation, amongst the vast amount of other things, is. Like when we can just like look at a problem and instead of like solving the problem, we just rename the problem something else in a way that makes the problem not sound like a problem. You're absolutely and, right. And what will happen is some other group will recognize the new problem and they'll apply their creative thinking to that new problem and that will go away. Right. With a new word. With a new yes. word. With a new word. This, we just used language yeah. to fix the world. Yeah, it's kind of like when the the R word, you know, when people were mentally retarded, and of course that you, you couldn't say that anymore, no. even in a like medical way. Right. So, what about an automotive way? Because if you have a distributor, there is still advancing and retarding. Yeah. So that's okay. I think mm. we should cancel cars because of that. Oh wow! Yeah, Carbon any car emission. that has a carburetor, we need to distributor. But yeah. nonetheless, they cured retardation by saying you can't say that anymore. Right. It's true. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, because I haven't heard anything. No, they must it's not gone. be. They but be also, we're, you know what we're not even thinking about this minimalist thing? How many government grants is there for minimalists? Wow. Um, oh. It's got to be a lot. And you need a lot of money to buy very little. Yes. Yeah. Man. So there's got to be tons of money just sitting around for people that are willing to raise their right hand and say they're going to go minimal. Yeah. Wow. Very progressive. I mean, that, that's also... Uh, it's, that's also what we call that appendage assumptive to think that people would raise their right hand mm. and I don't think I don't think there we I should go. be I would like to apologize in the like, like, I behalf I don't of think, society right? that I assume. why can't you raise a foot yeah. Jared which appendage right? you would raise to accept yeah. your minimalist why? lifestyle to obtain why a large sum of money from the United States government. Why can't the president of the United States put their foot on mm. the Bible when they're being sworn in? Has anybody asked that question? Yeah. Right, Jared, do you only or write your with eyeball. your right hand? I do. Currently. Wow. That's, so, that's, wow. Why do you hate left-handed people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Man. why do you hate your left hand? Wow. You I'm do? just not as good with my left hand. You know what will help with that? A little bit more masturbation. Mm. Proven. Well, you could also call that right privilege. Mm. And he is right yeah. if you look at him. <laughs> yeah, I think that there's a reason why 
you should stop using your right hand and start using only your left hand. I think there's a big, there's a big reason why you should do that. I think it's affecting my character. Yeah, I do. It's affecting you, the people around you. I think it's systematic. I think you're not taking into consideration those around you. Wow. It's systematic uh, appendage selection that you have adopted over the course of your life and you don't even understand that. My, that that my, is wrong in itself because you're you're not even open to thinking about writing with your left hand daughter, or even your foot. My own daughter is left-handed. Wow. Oh. Wait, and I know when <laughs> How I, convenient. When I look at the level of hate involved in like sports like the NFL where you have all these privileged athletes that are very good at what they do, right. which is very uninclusive to people who aren't good. I look forward to the day, and hopefully it comes this month, when they mandate NFL quarterbacks have to throw with their left hand, their non-dominant hand, so they can be more inclusive to the people who can't throw as well. It's almost like in, in a way they don't deserve to be in the NFL because they're the best. It's like they, they don't deserve to be in the NFL because they're the best. I think what they probably need to do is start selecting from the worst for the NFL because that's, that'd be a, a much better... I mean, if, that'd we, be much better if, if we equalized to, the playing fields where every team was required to pick 50% of the best and 50% of the worst and you could only have half of your best and worst on the field at any given time, that would make for some great entertainment. Yeah, and really it would, would be all inclusive. I would feel yep. included in that yes, because of the like inclusion. Everybody could have a dream to of play for the, the, United, the, the NFL. And you know how all the NFL linemen are well over 300 pounds right. nowadays? How hateful is that towards skinny people? Yeah. I want to see, like, it's mandated where at least half of the linemen have to be 150 pounds or less. Right. Because that'd be safer with a 325-pound defensive lineman coming at them. It has the... It would run them right over so they would kinetic energy. energy. Less. The kinetic yes. energy and the athletic ability of a grizzly bear against... A person that a poodle uh, that mm -hmm. might have the opposite, right? You know, zero athletic ability or mass. I think that would be an interesting scenario now, for them. And we've covered we've covered a lot. We've here. covered medicine and sports, but we've not covered transportation. And why? Why? What? what what's the deal with airline pilots? Mm. That's um, discrimination. They, they seem, yeah, they seem very privileged with their training. Yeah, there's a selection education. process there. Standards. Don't agree with standards. I, when when the Wright brothers created flight, they didn't create it just for certain people. This is true. And now we're just the, the those of us that aren't afforded the ability to fly. We have to pay. Yeah. To fly. The, you should and be not able get to, paid. You should they be get able. Paid. You yeah. should be able to fly on any plane in America. And get paid and get paid with the with only identifying as a pilot and that you should be able to pilot a commercial airline with passengers because it is a commercial pilot's license. So Agreed. why I, is that not in the constitution? I don't know. I, I think the other thing that we need to do is start breaking down the centers of roads and not identifying lanes that people have to drive Ooh, in either license. because the lanes now are you're very restricted to just this lane that you have to drive, you know, 60, just, 70, 80. These restrictions really they inhibit people's personal growth. And yeah. then you have to identify as a person that drives 35 miles an hour on the right-hand side of the road. What if you're a person that wants to express themselves by driving 100 miles an hour on the left side of the road? Um, why are we preventing these and, people from doing and that? Why, and why does driving have to be so linearly? Right. Mm. Why can't we be more artistic with... like yeah, the Why fastest, are wheels only turning... This yeah. much. Why, why do we have to go from point A to point B in a straight line? Like, why can't we like be more geometric with how we traverse the terrain? Well, clearly, we would have to talk about the it comes down to road construction. Well, road construction, but also the time component. Everything is timed. I have to be here on time. I have to be at work at time. I have to leave work at a certain time. I think that's the real crux. We society still uses clocks. Yes. yes, that is a that is an incredibly good point. We have to actually tear down everything like time. We, yeah. we don't, we can just get rid of time. Imagine if we did. Speed limits, lines. I'll we be there. solved a lot of these problems. So no, you, you can't even say that you're going to be there. Oh yeah, You just have true. to say, yeah. 
I'll see you when I see you. Yeah. Or, uh, but the blind community, oh. like, what, are we really just see us? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was thinking I was so, you know, I, I was feeling so righteous. And then you just right through the heart. Well, I, didn't I mean, think you about still them. have a lot to, I mean, we all I'm do. growing. We all do. I'm growing. I can feel myself growing. I mean, yeah. I think we've solved a lot of world problems. We today. really have. This is uh, this, this enlightening. Yeah. This this I feel better. Right here. For sure. This is what I needed today. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I needed. JP, you, you opened us up. Yeah. Thank you. And you thank specialize you. generally in pets with psychology. Yeah. Well, I identify you guys as animals. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that makes sense. That is, yeah. it all hey. is so clear. Yeah. That's something that we can all agree on. Yeah. We are. We can all identify we are animals. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 yeah.